There we go, we finally... <laughs> That's right, things are about to get a bit primitive up in here because today we are reacting to Far Cry Primal Healing Animations. But before I forget, my new limited merch just dropped. I'll put a link to it below. Check it out. Let's dive right in. Oh my gosh. Some big piece of wood pulling right out of the forearm. Are there major blood vessels that you're going to injure yourself with if you pull them out? Yeah, there are some actually. Now you can fix it. You can put a tourniquet around it. You can push pressure on it. You would just have to know that risk of what's happened. Oh man. So modern day arrows, you try to pull it out and actually get stuck. Sometimes the better thing to do is to push it all the way through or cut that end off and then pull the rest out the other direction. Now this game is like forever in the past. Quit living in the past. It's probably just more of like a blunt tip, but they still have the wings on it, so to speak. So you can see on the second arrow that he pulls out the one end, snaps it off, and then pulls the other end out, exactly as I just described. Even in this situation, you can still wrap it to prevent the bleeding. Oh my gosh, just the sound. It gets stuck in the bone. It's actually stuck in the bone. It's in the bone. It's in the bone. Hard to get it out. It may need to be just snapped off and leave it as is, especially in a situation where this individual is running around in the wilderness. Oh, he's on fire. Stop, drop, and roll. There you go. We finally... <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. It's the first thing that comes to my mind. Patting it out, you can do that, but you're potentially going to burn the palm of your hand. And then the other thing obvious would be to take off whatever is burning, such as the clothing. Oh, we get people who dislocate fingers very often. Normally it occurs at the PIP joint, which is the proximal interphalangeal joint. To put it back in, you actually pull a little bit so you can disarticulate where it's stuck and then pop it right back over. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, what? What is he swinging at? But it is a bee. I hope he doesn't have an allergy to bees. If you have an allergic reaction to the bee, we're gonna give you epinephrine. Obviously in this setting, that ain't happening. So don't piss off the bee. Bees are really good. They help with pollination. They help with the environment. Try not to kill bees if you don't have to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like a major onslaught of arrows to the forearms. Prehistoric time, there have some probably medicinal things out there. Would I pull these out in these situations? Yes, what else are you gonna do? You're in the woods, you're potentially going to die. You also increase the risk of having infection and dying from that, but you have to weigh the risks and the benefits. Oh, sweet. Wait a minute. Oh. I don't know how that guy got burned. How'd it get burned? How'd it get burned? If you have that many flames around you, the flames are taking the oxygen away from you. So you're gonna have difficulty breathing. You're freaking out in pain. You're going to be breathing heavily, which then you're going to be breathing in the flames, which is going to increase the amount of inflammation. And then you're potentially gonna cut off your own airway as well. <laughs> Oh man, he threw a ton of bees at him. We'll have people that come in who aren't allergic to bee stings, but because of the amount of bees that actually got them. I'm covered in bees! It causes just a massive inflammatory reaction. We've had people where the pain is so bad that we'll literally intubate them, sedate them, just knock them out so they don't have to suffer through this pain while their body is trying to defend itself, so to speak. Oh yeah, sweet. So he's, I love it. I love it. Okay, finally I'm seeing this. He's actually putting things on his wounds to make sure that they don't get infected. Super cool. Plants are amazing. There's a lot of plants out there that actually do have the ability to help decrease inflammation, fight off infections. Some of the medicines that we have today are derivatives off of plants that were used way back when. We are the flower children. Oh, he's like getting soothed by his wound healing. Even the military does this if they don't have wound dressings. It's to pack the wound filled with dirt. Obviously, it increases your risk of infection, but it's going to stop you from bleeding out and dying. Oh, we got a boar. Get the boar. Is that a boar? No, it's a lion. Lions and tigers and bears. It's getting slashed up. It looks like probably a female lion. I'm a lion! Don't mess with big cats. The bite wounds are gonna potentially cause infection and same with the scratches from the nails. There are two bacteria that we worry about relating to cats, Bartonella hensleyi and then Pasteurella. We have specific antibiotics against, but not them. 
they're using all these arrows. The question is, were they poisoning the tips of their arrows with a dart frog? It messes with your nervous system and it's very, very toxic to humans. Do they just put their arrows in your fecal material? That way you do get infection when it actually hits. Is that something that they knew of back then? I don't think he needs to rip it out in that setting unless it paralyzes the arm or incapacitates the arm that he can't use it. So in this case, don't pull it out. Oh, on the top side, this would be your dorsal aspect. Most of your blood vessels are actually on the underside. They're protected. So where he had the wounds, it was just stuck in the tissue. You just get abnormal bleeding. You're protected by the bones with the arteries at your wrist. Oh my gosh. You should be wrapping them up. Obviously you're wearing clothes, so you should potentially even just take a piece of your garment and wrap it around it. To stop bleeding wounds, you need to put pressure. pressure. A lot of us just put bandages on them and don't put pressure on them. They're gonna to continue to ooze or bleed through. Wow, super cool. Really cool that they're actually putting stuff in the wound. Obviously we don't put things in the wound very often, especially if it's an open wound and it's healing because you can't close it right away for whatever reason. Even using the stick in the mouth to bite down for pain, people still do this, grit your teeth, so to speak. Even when I work out, sometimes I wear a mouth guard because I'm written down to lift something really heavy. Super painful, it's like pushing really hard in there. A lot of times when people come in for wounds, we'll numb it up with lidocaine first and the pain from getting injection is actually the medicine itself. The acidity of the medicine will actually cause it to burn and feel uncomfortable. The needle itself is so small and the wound is already cut, you have already injured the nerves that typically the needle doesn't hurt. It's actually the medication that actually hurts. Tough. Cool, and then you're gonna put a leaf to cover it up, right? Nice! Then yes, you're gonna cover the wound. You may put antibiotic ointment in there. There are different leaves out there that do have some anti-inflammatory and medicinal uses. You wanna make sure that you know what plant or leaf that you're actually putting on your wound because there are some good ones and there are some that are toxic and actually cause more harm and cause infection. So you really need to know what you're using out there. I love this. I love this Far Cry game, super cool. You know, it's you got to see the use of medicine here. If you guys enjoyed this and you want me to definitely check out more of the Far Cry series, uh, let me know in the comments. And as always, make sure you check out this playlist right over here and make sure you subscribe. Please turn those bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.